Earth and Tree Miniatures is technically a small business, but it's a 3,000 square foot dollhouse miniature store located in Amherst, New Hampshire that's been in business for over 30 years. I shopped in person, but you can also visit their website. When I got to Earth and Tree Miniatures, the first thing I did was make a beeline for the sales table where I picked up this solid brass lamp for $4. It does indeed work, so $4 for this lamp is amazing. The lamp is two pieces with this beautiful solid brass shade that kind of looks like a fruit bowl. I'll be making almost everything in the Gryffindor common room from scratch, but probably not the lighting, so this may make an appearance in that room. I'm also working on a French boutique, so I picked up a couple kits for accessories. The kit comes with templates to create two boxes because you can make two different pairs of shoes from this one kit. I'll be assembling this kit on my channel so we can learn together how all of these pieces factor into the equation. The purses and the shoes are made from printed paper. I know some tricks for making paper look like leather. I bought several 25 cent blind bags and this is the first. This bat seems to be in scale but looks pretty cheap so it would be a good candidate for my series where I make plastic miniatures look more realistic. This is a super simple vinyl shade. I don't know who this is at the bottom, but I know that's Michael Jackson on the top. These tiny tiles would work well as a floor in a 144 scale dollhouse. But I mainly bought this 25 cent bag because I wanted to see what this piece is. This was probably heavily discounted because the sticker came off. I'm reattaching it with white glue. I glued it on sideways and do fix it later. Now I can finally tell what this piece is and it is a metal base with a plastic cordless phone. For more realism, I could add a cord on the back. I bought these turned wooden pegs for $3. There are 12 sets of two pegs, which makes these 12 cents a piece. I'm planning to use some of these to make a haul tree at some point. For $3, I scored this Lundby fridge from the sale table. There were a whole bunch of vintage Lundby pieces at the store on this particular day, and I bought all of them. They were made in the 1970s by the Swedish company Lundby. The fridge is made of mostly wood, but the door and the insides are plastic. This plastic bin is hopelessly stuck and I cannot get it out. For $4, I got this kitchen piece, which was part of the same collection. I thought this was actually a stove, but I realize now it's a dishwasher after doing some Googling. I really wanted to get this dishwasher open to see if the plastic tray is inside, and it is. At the bottom of the dishwasher, you can see this sprayer, which is a cool detail. These are 116 scale. For the low, low price of $1, I bought this table, which is probably a plant stand. It breaks down into three pieces, which will make finishing it even easier. The legs are glued on crooked, so those are coming off. I'm removing the old glue residue. I'm using a cheap round metal file to clean up the inside of the leg, which is curved. The wood on the edge of the table is a bit shaggy, so I'm sanding that as well. The legs are curved, but have very boxy edges. I'm rounding all the straight cut edges to make this look more traditional and more expensive. These square edges don't look right with this Queen Anne style leg, so it looks a lot better once it's sanded. It also looks more in scale. I'm adding color with some antique Waverly wax. You brush the product on and wipe away the excess. Once the pieces are completely dry, you can seal them. I'm using wax. I bought this in 2017 and rediscovered it in my garage and have been enjoying using it. I'm applying it with a brush. 15 minutes later, I wipe it off. Wiping it removes the excess. I didn't apply any of the wax where the glue will be. I place the table upside down to position the legs. I let the glue set for a few minutes and then removed the excess. This is looking pretty damn good for costing $1. I used up most of my cove molding when I made this ice box out of popsicle sticks, so I picked up two more. I was trying to buy the same size, but I accidentally bought one that is slightly too big and then one that is clearly too small. But these will work well in future scratch builds. I picked up this new old stock Lundby kitchen set for 20 bucks. This is the stove from the Lundby kits compared to the dishwasher from the red set. I'm assuming they made the same type of thing in brown with the same backsplash so this kitchen set could be expanded. This set also comes with this wooden table and chairs. 
Remember, these lend to be pieces are 116 or 3 quarter scale, so they're right in between 112 and 124 scale. For 25 cents, I got another grab bag. I have an index card with some double sided tape, and stuck to it are some flash cards with simple addition math problems. I bought some really cute child furniture and toys in a recent Timu haul, so maybe these will make an appearance in a child's bedroom someday. Here's some vintage food made of plastic and wood. I have a feeling these are from the 70s, but it's just a guess. This could be repurposed, but it's a wooden jug of milk. And some vintage plastic steak to reach your protein macro goals. These are worth the 25 cents all on their own, but there's more. I'm not sure what this is, but it says Riviera on the back. The bags will often include things like this you can use for crafting. The metal is fairly soft, so it can be bent. I'm picturing this hung on a wall in a dollhouse right up toward the ceiling with some curtains cascading over it over a bed. Be a super fancy canopy thing. Could be cut up into picture frames, I suppose. I just noticed this loop on this side, and there's nothing on the other side, but I would guess this is a hair barret. These wooden discs are super versatile and could be used as a little clock. You can just glue a clock base to the front. I have a nice collection of these wooden tiles at this point because they're often included in the 25 cent mystery bags. You'll see these in a project someday, I'm sure. I like the vibe of this vintage glycerin poster and this pretty printout. This is adhesive backed, so instead of using it as tiles, I would probably use it as book covers to mimic aged leather. For $5, I got this solid wood corner cabinet. This is also 116 scale, but I'm not sure if it's made by Lundby. The items were priced separately, but this was a matching set, so I picked up the chairs as well. The chairs cost $1 each, and there were four of them. I am normally tempted to reupholster or paint upholstery, but I actually like the cushions on these. I paid $4 in total for the dining chairs and another $3 for the matching dining table. All of these pieces are made of wood and are great quality. For just $12, I got this set of beautiful vintage pieces. The prices at Earth and Tree really cannot be beat. In this 25 cent bag, we have these houseworks legs that retail for $2.50. I really like these carved wooden legs because they have these bunt feet at the bottom. I'm sure I can find a use for these strange crafting materials. This handmade wooden felt doll is posable because she has wire legs and arms. There's a simple way to make this look more like a dollhouse miniature and less like an ornament. Just remove the loop on top of any ornaments or charms you use to disguise their origins. I could use this wooden disc as a base for a project and find a glass cloche to fit over top of it. I recently aged some vintage metal food cans, so maybe I can use all of this vintage food in an old fallout shelter diorama. I'm not sure what this was in a past life, but I could easily turn it into a dollhouse table by adding a top. I picked up these beautiful vintage brass and irons for my miniature fireplace in the Gryffindor common room. These cost $10. I really love all the different turnings and detail in this delicate little thing at the top. These go inside of a fireplace so you can put the logs across them. This $7 kit for creating shoes includes laces and has a completely different style from the first kit. In the other kit, both of the purses are the same style, but they're different for this one. I wish these were laser cutouts so I don't have to do it. Between the two kits, I'll have four clutches and four pairs of shoes. Some of the random bits I scratch build with came from these grab bags. This paper is probably intended for a dollhouse ceiling, but it would also work to make miniature vinyl shades. This bag included lots of wooden bits for crafting, a faux leather book with paper pages, and a bunch of what I imagine are painted dried seeds, which could be used to mimic food in bowls or baskets. A vintage Chinese checkers board, a pretty enamel poinsettia pendant for a necklace, plus a miniature metal tool, which is probably a file or knife sharpener. I store all these bits and pieces in plastic organizers. These organizers were either given to me or I purchased them secondhand at Goodwill by the Pound or their regular Goodwill stores. This particular container holds my kitchen minis. For my final Lendby pieces, I have this bathroom suite. 
This was the first piece that caught my eye. I really like the faux glass and it was only $4 for this awesome piece with beautiful details. The hose is elastic, but everything else is plastic. There's a button on top of the tank cover and the toilet seat actually works. The toilet paper is made of plastic and the little scrub brush doesn't come out. This costs $3. I'm gluing down this corner where the paper popped up and using one of my weak Dollar Tree clips to hold it down so it doesn't indent the surface. Someone let me know if this razor is original to this bathroom cabinet with double sinks. This wood and plastic piece cost $5 because the cabinet door is broken. I'm not sure how I would repair that so maybe it'll just get glued shut. Earth and Tree has thousands of dollhouse miniatures in stock at prices that are way better than I found anywhere else, so please visit their website and check them out to support this small, woman-owned business. Check out this video next to see how I customized this kit I bought at Earth and Tree.